Radio guys, welcome to, we'll call it Chinwag. Chinwag. Chinwag, yep, yep that's it. So we've got Gordon, aka Gordo. Uh, so he's come down from Kyabram. How far is Kyabram? Uh, hours drive from here. An hour, so you'd be looking yep. at about 100k? Yeah, 100k's. Yeah. 100k's right, so. So he's brought, you would have seen uh, the Himalayan, all the guys in, in India, Himalayan. Uh, on that Kamaruka, the Kamaruka ride, and I just loved this setup. Like what he, what you've done with this, yep. like that. This is what I live for. Just the cheap, bloody, and it works. And I tell you what, it looks really good. Um, so we're just going to have a bit of a bloody chat. We'll have a close up look around what uh, Gordo's done with the the mods and the additions and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> All right, but right. first, so you live in Kyabram. Yep. He's a crewman, so... Yep, crewman. Crewman off uh, Patreon. And what do you do for a living? So actually, uh, raw milk logistics. Raw for, milk logistics. Yes, so yeah, oh yeah, A2 milk in particular is one, one of our women customers. All right, so if we're talking in layman yep. terms, is, so, that, is that milk directly out of the cow's udder? Yep, so direct off farm to, to factory to... Local and to from Singapore and China. Oh, really? Yeah. So you what? You so, just manage where the milk's got to go, and yep. when they're short here, you get a truck yep. or something to go up there. Yep. So I manage all all the factories that own, own milk supply. Yep. With all our farmers, then if we need to buy more milk in, then I'll go and buy more, more milk in. Like we are, we're getting milk, milk from down Warrnambool way at the moment. Oh, really? So. Ah, we're, we're right. About, uh, near one point five million a week. Yeah, put through the plant. That's a lot of milk. That's a lot of milk. <laughs> when, I start, when I started there, yeah, she was only sixty thousand litres a week. It's a real big. Oh, week. really? Now we're <clears> pushing <throat> you one point five a week. <coughs> right. which is so, a is big that... effort for a family-owned business? Oh, that's only a family-owned business. Yeah, that's your, not your business. No, no you work for yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, so is it like it's not one of the big crowds? Like no, we wouldn't know the name of it. No, it's just base. You got the names here. Ah, uh, Tri Valley Dairies. Then. Or it's so your, your Mol Molkay brother's own. So. Oh, all right. So. Well, there you go. So that's a little bit about... Oh, well, actually, a little bit more about Gordo is that... What, did you, what was the bike you had before before this one? The bike before this, that was your Honda CBR600F. It was a Smoke and Joe's replica of some American racer. Simply put, it was a race bike with indicators. Oh, really? Yep. It yeah. was li literally... Um, spec there was all done up before I got it, and um, yeah, but life gets in the way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but uh, basically, um, wrong misses, couldn't budget, like the pokies. Long story. That's a co that's a common story. Oh, that's a bloody yeah. common. You hear that uh, all the time. Yeah. But it was born, um, very frustrating. But basically, me me boys only sixteen now, so he's yeah. so he's born. Being single parent, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So needed getting the bikes, bit of bit of stress stress relief. Yeah. So yeah. I seen well, it was good seeing, seeing Mark because one the postie's bike. Cause my first bike was a postie at eight, ah. eight years old. Yeah. Old man forgot for a hundred bucks. Oh really? And that just just went from year eight till twenty years old. Still had it. All my mates just. I did up, up around the little Barma forest and all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And st still go, even though the kickstand nearly fall to the ground's like a low on compression by the time yeah. we got it. <laughs> still went though. Nah, so it was this, the 110 YZ80 Yamaha, Yamaha two stroke, the 100, Honda 100XL, and the Honda 250XL had on my learners at school, and then had the the GS thousand Suzuki. So so you, obviously when you were young you had a pretty good dirt yeah. bike. D Hence why when yeah. you after fifteen years yeah. after, so Gordo's only just got the Himalayan after fifteen, 15 years, years of being off the bike. Off, not having a bike at all. You've done two how many three thousand Ks now on the Himalayan since yeah. February. And you've done a little bit of dirt before the Kamaruka, but pretty much Kamaruka was... I've probably done about 10 k's of dirt. Yeah. Before Kamaruka. So the way years. that you rode that bike... 
Yeah, it was like you're thinking, you know, 15 years, but yeah. because you had all that previous dirt bike, yeah. it just kind of like came back this to you. This is like back. Yep, yep, no, nah, from power on, from small log jump over. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> like, made it, beauty. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Tried one of Steve, Steve's trick, tricks out of Kamaruka and went through it like snaky ass. Hang on, that second time didn't want to find him, though. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's it, yeah. Yeah, crazy. Yeah. All right, so let's just have, we're gonna ha we're now gonna bloody have a close up look around of all, all the stuff that um, Gordo's done to the bike. Then we'll sit back down, and I want to ask Gordo what what his thoughts are on the Himalayan. Clearly, he's going to be um, biased because it's his bike, but he's done he's done the now done the. The dirt off-road stuff, which going through Kamariki, you gave that a real good bloody. Well, that's a, that's a good yeah. test for a bike, Dylan. That was, he did. That was a real, real good go. It's a lot harder than to push the bike before. I've yeah. been putting around, putting around on the road, going over Pullman Shed here yeah. and Pullman over at Rue near, near Rushy there. Yeah, so. It's just cruising. But then he's got the long, you know, you've, he's done a long bloody, an hour's ride from Kyabram to here, to here yeah. on the highway so you know you've got that real a real oh, buddy uh, real life uh, putting it through its paces and I'm interested to hear what he thinks of it all right let's have a look around so the first thing that I love about this is these pannier bags so they were $20 specials $20 from specials from Bunnings Bunnings and yeah. I've seen these in kangaroo flat Bunnings now they were $30 but you got them for 20 yet. Yeah, over at uh, Shepparton, your big superstore one. Yeah, the Chuka had them for 35 so yeah. obviously depending on where you get them, but yeah, so 20 bucks each. Each, yep. And they are Eskies. So it's if you want to open lessons. that up. So I've just got basically this is just a gotcha strap from Bunnings as well put on there to keep close. Yep. So they just basically plain old Esky, put your drink on whatever. Yeah. All zip tied oh, in. So Oh, that's zip tied zip around the ah oh, through there. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, brilliant. So there's plenty on there. There. They're nice. not going anywhere. No, no, no shit, no. And it's good to see they haven't torn with all the muck and round we done on over at America. Yeah. 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 I thought, mm, we'll try. And Same it, point, well, yeah. you know, it, it may not last forever, but I mean, for the price yeah. that you've paid. And this, I just couldn't decide whether it was going to get your big proper steel ones or your soft ones. Soft ones. Soft ones is what you want. Soft ones? Soft uh, ones. Or we'll go soft ones. Yeah. So yeah. If, you, if you're going to um, be doing the off-road stuff, um, soft ones. Otherwise, you, you, you come off. Yeah. Um, yeah, if you come off, you, you're going to bend them, break them, yeah. get your leg caught, you, yeah. know, trap, you know, like what's happened to Steve with the, yeah. the bike fell on his foot. It you know, you, a hard pannier. Crunching your bloody leg, <laughs> yeah. So I, no, that's so. my personal view. Yeah. Always go the soft. Yeah. Yeah. I was look, looking at the Wolfmans, but thought, just for starters, to figure it out, this is cheap. Yeah. I'll, I'll do, do for the moment. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And there. And if you hadn't got the Wolfmans, we wouldn't be, we wouldn't be bloody, we wouldn't be saying what we're saying. Going on, my God, check this shit out. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Just to get us started, basically, I've, I've got, got the bike. Not a big expensive one. No. And she's just do doing the job. Yep. She's pr pretty handy, these things. I haven't got me, me helmet lock in there to clack one of me bars. Oh, all right, <laughs> cool. All right, so the second thing are these big bloody tubes. Like, they are massive. I don't know, what diameter? Do you know what diameter they is? Oh, uh, that'd be th three inch. Yeah, huge. So if we open, open them up, so this now, is probably, clearly he's got like a bands which we yeah. know aren't going to last very nah. long. <laughs> so we'll chuck them just for the moment. So I'll open this one, this one up. There's not much room spare. So this oh, is yeah. the old three-legged stool, brilliant. Yeah. Stool just slides right in there. Look at all that. Just yeah, yeah. simple as. So you can just throw all your stuff, basically, and just chuck her in. Boom. Don't have to worry about tying the thing on. Just, no, no, that's nah. it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, just screw yeah. it back on. Keep your seat nice and dry. Yep. So, I'll figure the other one I can put extra your fuel bottles. 
Oh. I, I can put one that goes like just up halfway. So you get two of... little one liters. Yeah. yeah. I reckon in there. Yeah. 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 Right. They actually had basically an old for the weekend over at Kamaruka. <coughs> they actually went and put your 1.25 liter stubby. Um, it was only just your, your, your plastic booming, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, alcoholic apple cider bottle it was. Oh, <laughs> right. This is 1.25 litre which filled it up. Yeah. So I had some spare fuel. Brilliant. So I wasn't sure how it would go with fuel wise, being just giving it, yeah. giving it lots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I thought I better put a little bit of fuel in there. I didn't have you proper be 30 on for this. That'll look. Yeah, yeah, excellent. All right, so then we go on to the the top box. Yep, yeah, our Kmart top box. This one. So as you would have seen in that Kamaruka one, we have the fold-out table, bloody uh, clothes hanger. Uh, if you're stuck in a bog, someone can bloody help pull you out. Yep, <laughs> bit of a reach. Yep, if you so. pop a monos, that'll bloody stop, stop you from <laughs> flipping over. I mean, multi-use, isn't it? <laughs> Yeah, sorry. All right, open her up. So, I thought this was pretty cool because you can just go and just open up. You've yeah, got all your gear. Camera, thermos. So, how do you bag. have that? Can you, is that attached to the bottom piece? Can you actually see? No, this is just, just sitting in there. This is, oh, how this is attached? Yeah. This is um, good old zip ties. Yep. So, it is actually. Oh, look, I can see. Yeah, yeah, right. Yep. So uh, this is this see, is actually a bit of floor flooring grid from Bunnings as well. Yeah. Oh, so right. one of those special piles. And things. Oh, so it's only fairly flimsy, but it, yeah. yeah. But it was all just enough. The starters. And clearly it it uh, held up, didn't it? Yeah, go, go through Karamoka and Benson and Ramsall. Yeah. Good old zip ties, basically. Already had the holes in it, so. Like, yeah. Beauty that uh, that'll do for the moment. Brilliant. So how much does that thing cost you? Uh, that. No, that wouldn't be much. But this thing. This 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 is the this is the uh, um, twenty five that one. Twenty five bucks. Yeah, you know, it was <laughs> special, special. It came up. <laughs> Love it. Absolute awesome. So basically, you go on. You got you got me um, munchies. You got some sunnies. We got from Mark. Oh <laughs> yeah yeah yeah. You got your yeah. So you got all the extra little pockets. Shop, shop, shopping bags and so she's um. We got uh, oh, yeah, pockets got me, on the side. Got me, me coffee and yeah, pulling tools and bits and pieces. So, she's, uh, so one of the legitimate things that you've done is you've put on the crash bars. Yeah. So you put on the engine crash bars because <laughs> hadn't been on the bike for so long. I better do something about that. Yeah. So cuts. where did you get them from? These, I actually got um, Michael at Midlife Cycles to put them on when he, when he, when he got the bike. Oh, right. So, so they had them here yeah. in Melbourne. I get, so when I got the bike, I got asked Michael, we just put the crash bars on, the bark busters and the pannier oh. racks for us. Oh, and the, oh, right. So pannier racks too. So these are stock to the... These are just... Are they universal or are they actually for the uh, Himalayan? I think there's, I didn't actually ask, but I think they're just universal because like Himalayan yeah. ones actually have a little fold out step thing. Oh, I've like, seen it, I know, yeah, 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 I've seen it, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. But sure. obviously the crash bars are for the Himalayan. That's, yeah, yeah right. They'd be so that's good for people that have the Himalayan to know that they can they can get they can that. Get yeah. yeah. Right. And the bloody bark busters too. They're, um, they're good in cold weather too. Yeah, they do, yeah, that's it. So which ones are yours? Because I've got the Jets. Yours are Storm. Storm yeah, so you yeah. have more um, coverage from the bloody weather. Yeah, so the one I was talking to Michael, the middle of the cycle, he reckons these would be good because they're... Because of... Basically, I didn't I only have my summer gloves. Yeah. So it'll always be really good with the fair... Yeah, yeah fair that's... Nice, yeah, that's it. Nice coverage, eh? Which certainly makes a difference. <laughs> yeah. So then you've got on here, if we can. Oh. So that's that comes that's stock with the bike. With with the with the with your tank bars. Yeah. Where they're just 
They already already stock got your emblem on. Now you've put this um, rubber oh. stuff on there, but that's for your knees because yeah, you're so, a tall rider. So, so just whilst if we're, when you're going off road, I thought just in case I might go and slide for and you knock your knees maybe. Yeah. Or we'll just stick a bit of foam on there just yeah, in case. Yeah, yeah that's it. So. Absolutely. Cool. Which brings us now to the old swing arm bloody uh, bags, cruiser bags. Yeah. What? How much were they? These were, they were the 25 for a pair. Yep. And it, they did come with your little tool roll thing as well. Oh, really? Yeah. So I didn't quite find a spot for that little one. Yeah. But, so you can put your, your drinks and nibblies and yeah. camera. I mean, 25 roll. bucks, you just can't go wrong no. for a set. Yeah. Yeah, obviously, yeah, it's got that, that bloody, that cruiser look to it, but I mean, God. And of course you've got the buckles, which can yeah. be a little bit fiddly. Yeah. And as you said, like these flap around if you don't. Yeah, you don't time a little flap around. So. Yeah, so you'll just put a bit of I've bloody, uh, just, yeah, Velcro, just put a bit of Velcro on them instead, I was, I was thinking maybe. Yeah, brilliant it's, idea. It's only a bit of drinks and food, so it doesn't matter if anyone gets in them, so. Yeah, yeah, exactly, that's yeah. it. So I thought that'll, that'll, that'll do, do us for, for starters and just then once we've had the bike for a bit, it was, yeah, it was, it was working, Get a bit more, bit more cash in the pocket and you uh, feel like you want to spend it. Yeah, well, this is, it's, it's a lot cheaper than, than driving the Pajero. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's it. That, that's a hundred bucks to fill up the fuel tank. <laughs> yeah. So what else, what, oh, actually, here we go, up here. So the old wind deflector. And that was another cheap bloody thing off. Yeah, it was. It was, it was still only twenty five, oh, twenty bucks, twenty bucks. Yeah. Off from on bloody Amazon. Yeah, right. So it's it just pretty simple, isn't it? You just it just sits over there, sits over screws, that, clamps screws, down, you can, and then you got adjust your adjust. You can adjust it up and up and down a bit. Yeah. yeah. So the only the, the only problem that you had, and that was that Camaruka. So when we're doing the off road bloody bullshit. Yeah. So whilst it's on the off-road, because with the dust base, you, you, I couldn't see see through through that top plastic. It was it was just a bit too high. Yeah. The standard one is great for off-road. Yeah. Because you 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 can look over that you should, easily. You should be just you should be eyesight should be just over the top of it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, which is great. But just for on the highways where you need need that top one just for the buffeting because I'm six foot two. Yeah. So it's just just that a little bit too too tall for the original woman arm uh, bearing there, but that's the um, very cool cool the original one. Oh yeah 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 definitely <laughs> definitely off road is perfect height. Yeah. yeah. Cool. So that's about it, isn't it, Gordon? Yeah, that, 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 that's it. So that's when one of the re reasons I particularly like like the Himalayan was because you had all the bars, you can put all, all your all your boom bags and bits and pieces on and just long day, long day, week, week at work and there's throw stuff on the bike and just bugger off down the bush. That's it. Righto. Righto, so there you go. That's all the uh, the mods and bits and pieces. So now, tell us, so you've, you've done shitloads of bloody highway stuff, bumming around yep. the towns. You've now done the Camaruka, really given, given the bike a bloody go through that. And I know you did because yeah. <laughs> we were all keeping up yeah. to Ray. Yeah, like um, that was an effort. <laughs> yeah. I was, I mean, from what I saw when I was behind you yeah. and stuff like that, I lost some bloody, there was no, I, the footage where we came out to that road. Yeah. I, I thought I'd fucking lost it all, but anyway. Um, yeah, so w what, do you, what do you reckon? So, from what I expected, Buying, buying the the Himalayan, I was expecting a utilitarian workhorse type of bike just to go anywhere, not not be a massive highway cru cruiser only. Exactly, but that's it. So far, it's living up to all those ex expectations. Coming from the CBR, as in that would go hell a lot faster than what you're supposed to, <laughs> which was a lot lot of fun when I was younger. Yeah, but um. I knew it would be a, a little bit, it uh, could be a bit more, but in reality, I bought it for a, for a reason. Cheap, cheaper to register, cheap to insure. Basically, is something I can fix. Basically, screwdriver and a shifter, and yes. pretty much fix most things, which is 
yeah. was a big, big plus. So before you go on, so how much? Did, it's a 2018 model. Yep. This is the carburetor, which you were yep. happy with because now yep. you can you can muck around with yep. a carburetor yep. as opposed to an EFI. Won't get into that bloody argument. Um, so 2018, it's the carburetor one. The new ones coming into Australia are now EFI. The newer models, yeah, like apparently. The, like the the next, in or almost, like, almost. Yeah, in. yeah. Um, where was I going with that? How much did you pay for it? So it was just six nine ninety on road. Yeah, so and obviously you had the extras. That, that, yeah. that, that, I, that I, I put your your bark buses, engine guard, and the pannier rack, racks on the bike. Yeah. So seven grand. It's a cheap. It's yeah, a cheap, it's cheap bike. Brand, brand new bike. And like you were saying, util it's utilitarian. It's got it's got character. When you look, yeah, you know, when you look at a DR650, it or, you just see a bike. It doesn't stand out. Yeah. Like I'll, you look at a KTM or a Triumph yeah. or a Tenere. I like the Tenere. Yeah. Steve's Tenere is just oh, it's they're great. a great looking <laughs> bike. Uh, I was I was, I was, je I was je jealous jealous of Steve's Tenere. Yeah. I was thinking. Probably a little bit tall for me at the moment. And it is, they are. They're a, even for yeah. me, that's a tall bike. And they're a heavy bike. I mean, this is a heavy bike because it's yeah. like a KLR, so it's what, 180? It's 180, yeah. Yeah, 180 yeah. kilograms. But you've got that low seat, yeah. weights down low, very, very manageable. Yeah. You, you don't know, because going through <laughs> Camaruka, I knew it should, should have been all right, but it surprised us how easy it was to, to flick, flick, flick around the, the, the yeah. bush. The tight turns, avoiding Steve. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. But the thing with the, the the Himalayan is that you look at it and you it, it grabs your attention. Well, yeah. for me, it, it grabbed well, when they first when I first seen it. It just grabs my attention. It's a cool looking bike. It looks like what it rides. I think. Yeah, and it, what it it's, does. It's the purpose of yeah. the bike. Um, so if if yeah, you you thinking oh I'll get the Himalayan and then you know it doesn't have the power that you expect well you went in, into buying that yeah. for the wrong reasons yeah so you, yeah you, it's it's got all the power you need to yeah. to get around to get around else where it's, it's now done just over three thousand k's it's actually freed up a hell of a lot compared to when, uh, when I actually bought it yeah so that'd yeah. be interesting <laughs> I mean. Mark has, has oh, a I'm going to get a ride, am I? What, what do you think? Yeah, yeah, yeah I'll give that a Because you, you've, you've ridden the, the brand new oh, off the showroom, basically not yeah, right yeah. in. Yeah. And this is, it take, seems to take a step, it's freed up again. It's yeah. It's just turning into a so 5,000 Ks. I'm really keen to just see how it's really settled. Yeah. But all around bike, throw it around, you can do your highway. Speeds, it's, it's not a freeway, freeway cruiser, but we'll do it. But, no. um, for every day, throw your bags and bits and pieces on, and um, yeah, it, look, it, when it comes to doing the highway speed, it'll do it. Same as the uh, Max, the DR650, it will do it. If you jump on a Tenere 660, it's going to do it a little bit better. If you jump on Ray's bloody GS1200 or Ooh. Alistair's 1090 KDM. They're going to do it so much easier, a bit more bloody comfort. But that, you know, every bike's going to yeah. come with its pros and cons. And, and of course, the, the, the price tag. The, pr the, 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 <laughs> the price tag, exactly, that's right. And it's not just the buying the price tag, it's the, you and know, upgrade. something breaks, price tag, the maintenance, yeah. price tag, so you know, all that kind of stuff. And this, because this is a 400, so here in Victoria, Australia, you know, the registration for a motorcycle is, and if I get me out of thing, because I just had a bloody look at it, um, so up to 60cc, it's like $146 uh, to do it. There's metro, uh, just outside of metro, and then there's rural. But I'll just give you the, the highest prices, and of course I need my short lookers, so hang on. Right, short lookers on. So yeah, $145.90 for the up to 60 cc's. From 61 to 125 cc, it's $404, so a big jump there. And then where the Himalayan comes in, that's from the 126 to 500 cc, is $516. But because Gordo lives in um, Kyabram, he's only paying $424.20. Mm. 
Um, and then when you jump over 500, so it's 500 and over, it's $682.70. So that's the, the, you know, the DR650, you know, my cruiser, bloody Harry, the, the C50. So that's another yeah, saving. Yeah. You're saving 180 bucks or something like that, that on the that rego. Was, that was another reason was why I was just keen to get it because it was under that 500 cc cat category because it was pretty. I was sure that it was, it was cheaper again. Yeah. And because basically you on the bike, wasn't going to cost us bugger all every week for insurance and rego. It's, yeah. it's cost me 200 bucks for full comprehensive for a year. Yeah. Brilliant. But say so, anything happens in. And I can go down the bush with this and not worry about scratching it like some big show pony. Yeah, yeah, that's that's it. That's so, exactly it. So just yeah. jump on, use it. Don't, don't, don't worry about it. All right. right. So uh, yeah, that's it. So good utilitarian. It's not a, it's not a highway bloody cruiser. It will do it. Uh, it's capable in the off road. Yeah. It's just a good all, all, base, all round, yeah. all round <laughs> bike. It's not going to set any bloody. No, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's not. Fantastic at anything in particular, but it does everything. Everything you can do everything well. on it. It does, still does it, especially with the, the bush and anything up to your 100 k's. It does it well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. All right, let's stop bloody rambling on. And apparently, we're going to go for a ride. Right, yeah, guys. So Gordo's on the uh, the Max the DR650. I'm obviously on the Himalayan. He's, we're just going to go through the proving ground. So far, just on the little ride over here on the road no everything's really smooth us the uh, throttle control the suspension's nice you know the obvious thing is it's it, it lacks that grunt the power it lacks not grunt it's got plenty of grunt it lacks that uh, get up and go real quick kind of stuff But apart from that, just it feels nice and balanced, like coming through stuff like that, not a problem. Standing up on the pegs, that feels pretty comfortable. Well, let's get into second gear. See how it does a little jumpy bit. Yep, no worries. Possibly a little bit heavy in the front. I think Max likes, uh, stays a little bit more level. How's Gordo? Is he buying me? I just better warn him about this one. Just on this bit here, they've put some rocks in the middle, so as you go up, we'll just go around it, that's all. Yeah. That's all right, there's nothing crazy. It looks worse than what it is. And we just go up. Just like that. See how Gordo goes. There you go. Brilliant. Straight down. Is he still coming? Yep. I know they, some of this stuff, if you haven't been through here before, it can be a little bit daunting to look at. So I'm obviously just taking it easy. But I, you know, this this is very capable bike. Yep, straight over, no bottom out. Beautiful. All right, let Gordo catch up. And we'll just go through these little whoopsie doozers, stand up. I said, if you just follow me, Gordo, I won't put you in any harm's way. <laughs> but there you go, look at that. Bloody, bloody brilliant. Yeah, that's going real good. Yeah, it's everything I thought it would be. Yeah, that, you know, it still is, because that's what I thought it was. All right, we'll continue. Yep. Righty -eye. I could easily, you know, have a bike like this for the type of riding that I do. Um, you know, just bumming around, giving it a bit of a go every now and then, but you know, my style of riding is just, um, just rambling. That's basically what I do. And, you know, whether it's a DR650 or it's a Himalayan, you know, these bikes are very, very capable for doing that type of stuff. 
and this does not feel heavy to me at all. I might just uh, duck around this way. A bit of off track stuff. It's, uh, it'll be good for Gordo. I don't know whether he's been on a DR650 before. Bloody, um... Well, there you go, guys. So that's um, the Himalayan. I love it. I reckon it's bloody a ripper bike. So I don't know if you can see that there, but as in comparison to um, Max, the, the, the DR650, you can see it is... Obviously, Max has been modded out. It's got the big Safari tank, so it is going to look bigger, uh, bulkier, than what a normal DR650 is. Hopefully, I'm trying to use this camera, guys. Um, but it's it's a much taller, you know, it's a taller seat height as opposed to the Himalayan. So, and that makes all the difference. If you can put your feet flat down on the ground, that yeah. boosts the confidence, yeah. which makes you um, a better rider and, you know, to, to keep bloody skill on those, those skills, I suppose. Yeah, so brilliant. Thanks, yeah. man. That was... Uh, like, like, yeah, and yeah. basically... Riding Max as well. That's a totally different bike. Yep. Basically, he looks big, but after you're going over a few ups and downs, and you actually just let Max drive away and feel darn good. Yeah. So you would have noticed, obviously, a little bit more get up and go yeah. than yeah. what the Himalayan yeah. does. Yeah. Yeah. But from a torque point, torque point. you got shitloads of torque. Yeah, yeah. Because It'll just tractor. Oh, yeah. tractor all day. Tractor. Yeah. Right, hey guys, remember. Keep on riding, and if you ain't riding, keep on keeping on.